I'm Jay-Z. I'm Daniel. And this is Just My DIY. And we're here today in Jay-Z's home office. Where everything is themed around writing. Including this lovely keyboard wall, as done by Jay-Z many years ago as her first attempt at resin. It needs to be revisited. Yeah, it looks great from afar, but if you get too close... Ah, it's a horror story. It's pretty bad. But now we know what we're doing with resin, so we're going to redo this wall and show you how it's done. Okay, so I think he's awkwardly staring at me because he wants me to kick this section off since I've done it before. Okay, uh, you actually need very few materials to make this whole thing happen. First and foremost, half gallon paint can lids. Very important to have those. Also very important, cargo pants to what? carry the paint can lids around in. Hands free. Totally get to do something else with these things while their pants are carrying your stuff for you. You do not need cargo pants. Oh yeah, you do. Because wait, there's more. <laughs> That's like eight and you're going to need 46. So what? I need to load up. No, no, we need to keep going. <laughs> so next black scrapbook paper or black cardstock spray adhesive and sealant along with three sizes of self-adhesive vinyl letters. To make things go a little faster and easier, you should definitely pick up a circle cutter. Bet you can't guess what that does. It cuts circles. It rattles. It is. It can like double as a rattle with a very sharp blade in it. Yeah, Don't give for, that to your kid. kids. No, no, definitely not for kids. <laughs> Let's go ahead. And get started. Before you start cutting all of your circles, you need to test a few of them to make sure that they fit inside the paint can lid that you're going to be using. We found that we could get a pattern of five to six per piece of paper, but it is important to not be quick. Take your time because it is easy to get off track and lose your actual circle. Once Daniel cut the circles, I went to work on the letters. We use three inch letters for the big letters, and a few of them are a little wide, so we did have to do a little bit of surgery on them to make them fit. For the numbers, we use two inch letters, and then the symbols, depending on the symbol, we use a combination of symbols from across the three, two, and one inch packs. However, you do have to create some of them yourself. Use one inch letters in particular for the shift key and the shift lock. Just be careful of spacing because those letters get a little wide. So we use a black sharpie to color in the edges because the middle layer to this paper was actually white. If your paper doesn't have that, it's fine. Now we're using Mod Podge to seal everything up and protect the paper and the letters from being absorbed into the resin and vice versa. It's important to give a 15 minute wait time between coatings as we ended up doing about four or five coatings. After ample drying time, we use an acid-free, high-tag, multi-purpose spray adhesive. We spray the backs of them so that we can put them into the paint can lids instead of getting the spray all over the paint can lids and possibly affecting the resin. Make sure that you get the edges of the letters most securely or you will have fun with the resin pour later. Now it's resin time! 
So this is actually a pretty straightforward resin pour, but I will say this is where I kept messing it up last time. First, make sure you're working on a level surface and put down the drop cloth. We like to double glove when we're working with resin because it gets a little messy. Mix your resin according to the instructions on your bottle. We use Promarine because it has a high UV rating and chances are good that it won't yellow as bad as one of the last resins I used did. You want to make sure to fill in the paint can lids all the way through the first ridge in the bottom. You'll see that we are rocking them around to make sure that the resin distributes evenly over the inner ridge. And of course you need to play with fire. <laughs> play with fire, I mean, use it to pop as many bubbles as you can as early on. Just don't overheat them or you may see some smoking and that is not desirable. The resin is cured and we are ready for install. Yay! Yay! So we're actually going to install this using the command picture hanging strips, which are a lot like Velcro. So since we are doing a reinstall and you would be doing a fresh install, we're going to talk you through a little bit differently here. You would take the both sides of the picture hanging strips, put them together. like very together. <laughs> Put them on the back of your key after you peel off the sticky. <laughs> oh, you actually wanted me yes. to Yes. So you would put them on the back of the key and then when you go to install, you would just stick it on the wall like that. That's gonna make it easiest to get everything lined up. And then you'd use the same alignment that we're actually going to show you. But ours is gonna be a little different because we gotta take this one down and we'll already have half the command strips there. Let's do it. The key thing to doing the install is having an equal space and making sure it's level. We had a little piece of cardboard that we used to ensure the right spacing and then a small level that we put between two keys and kept going with it to keep everything straight. Once we got to the second row, it was easy to use a ruler for spacing, but we always rechecked with the level as well. The last thing to know, the reason we use Velcro is so you can reposition the keys if you put one on a little wonky, so don't worry if it's not quite straight up and down when you first put it on. And that's how you make a typewriter keyboard wall the right way. So if you liked what you saw, click the subscribe button, click that like button, ring the bell so you know when we post future videos, and check out our list of materials down below. And if you're not watching this on our website, head over to JustMyDIY.com for other tips, tutorials, backstories, and more. Thanks for watching.